little topology setup here, and I've just been running some uh, data collection and experimenting with IGMP snooping just to see what the real world uh, behavior is um, on the platforms that I'm working with here. Now, uh, what brought this kind of, what kind of like, uh, I suppose, piqued my interest in this was an article which I read. Uh, it's a bit of a dated article, but it states here, you know, uh, you know, customer has a network and you can see there's a pretty simple, simple network topology here. And the problem is, is that it comes to says, well, I have a source, so I'm sending it into a switch. The, the source, the, the multicast source, and destinations are both in the same layer two broadcast domain. However, one of the receivers is actually on an adjacent switch. And so the problem is, is that, uh, you know, as described here, uh, you know, in the question that's trying to be answered is, well, why does one receiver receive traffic, but the other receiver doesn't, um, doesn't receive traffic? And so the answer given in this article is, is that because the um, IGMP messages um, and again, this presumes that there isn't, uh, you, we should scratch this router out. Forget the router here. Um, this presumes that we don't have a multicast router here. It's simply uh, IGMP enabled hosts with a source that's sending traffic. Uh, again, the host, uh, the, the source sending traffic, it can be IGMP enabled or it cannot be IGMP enabled. It doesn't matter. Uh, IGMP doesn't have anything really much to do with the actual uh, sources being sent. It, it doesn't need to, IGMP doesn't have any real specific requirements for sources that are sending in the traffic. The source just simply needs to send traffic. So the idea is that, um, of course, IGMP snooping allows us to build state information about interested receivers. Okay, so in our case here, again, this is as the article describes, is that the receivers signal using uh, an IGMP membership report to the switch. The switch CPU uh, intercepts this and actually is able to build state information about which ports uh, this multicast traffic should be forwarded to um, in the um, in the event that it receives traffic for this uh, group destination address. Okay, and the article goes on to describe with this particular platform, it's 6500 with Soup 720 and a Catalyst 3750. It goes on to describe that the reason why this receiver here doesn't receive the traffic is because the switches can only maintain local state information of about IGMP queries received if there's not an IGMP query or slash IGMP router present. So in other words, the state information cannot be built over here because IGMP queries are absorbed locally here and there is no way to maintain group membership um, apart from having an IGMP query present, okay? So now this is kind of, uh, I, I suppose this is different than what I've come to understand. If you read the RC about IGMP snooping, um, and also what I've observed, <clears throat> I think this article actually um, is probably incorrect and it doesn't apply to all platforms or, or, or more accurately, probably what happens is that the behavior has changed um, with newer versions of code. And the reason, the reason I say that is because I have a basic topology set up here. And what I'm seeing is, is that, so, so to recap here, we have switch one and switch two with two interested receivers here. We have multicast source here. What I what I am observing is is that if IGMP snooping is enabled, but we don't have an IGMP query present, what, what I'm noticing here is, is that the switches actually flood this traffic. I'm assuming as unknown multicast, and I've observed that here in the lab. So in other words, um, if I fire up a multicast feed, uh, let me actually uh, let me actually demonstrate this here. So let's just show let's show you this the state information right here. Right now we have no you know, we have no groups. There's no IGMP uh, query present. Uh, so let's do uh, show IP IGMP snooping uh, query. You see here, there's no query present because we don't have multicast router. Uh, again, according to the article in this situation, the source here should receive this traffic. Um, I should say that more accurately, what I should say is the switch should flood this traffic, but it should not flood it to the adjacent switch. Right, and so it should never make it over here to our, our second host. Okay, but what I observe is, and let's let's go ahead and fire this up. Uh, so we'll just do a ping here. Again, we've it, we've issued a, we've kind of like uh, issued kind of a you know simulating a host with the IP IGMP join group on gigabit zero one, which is which is where um, receiver here, this receiver two. Is, uh, is connected to via switch two, okay? So again, we see here, and there's two interesting observations. A is that, in fact, um, 
router uh, host two actually replies to this message because it sees that it's a explicitly uh, join this particular group. But something interesting here on switch two, again, you'll have to excuse that's older information. That's from when I was uh, uh, testing this previously. I've, re I've since removed that configuration. If we do look at the stooping table on switch two, you notice that there is no there is no state information built here. It's because, in fact, um, I think the article is just dated, in my opinion, and I think that the, we've changed this behavior. It looks as though we actually flood this traffic because if I go over to router one, I should say receiver uh, receiver one here, which of course is a router. I've actually have not issued the IGMP join. So here's the running config on this interface here. And so you can see here we haven't actually joined this group. But if you look at my Wireshark capture, um, you can see here that, in fact, we do see that this traffic, and you can see it's a little hard to see here, but you can see here that this traffic is actually being received uh, via um, via the fast Ethernet 01 interface. So in other words, this the traffic is being flooded out here. It's being flooded out here on all ports. Okay, again, that is with IGMP snooping enabled. Um, I would expect this to not be the case because, by definition, IGMP snooping should constrain multicast except for ports that are explicitly enabled for it. And again, IGMP snooping is definitely enabled. And I'll, I'll, I'll actually let me just so you don't think I'm making this up. Let's do show IP IGMP snooping. You can see here that um, it's enabled, and I, all my ports are inside VLAN one, so um, it's enabled here. So, like I said, I would expect this to not be the case because IGMP snooping by definition should constrain multicast. At least IANA, the IGMP um, multicast range, which of course is in the zero, um, zero one zero zero five E range, which is what which was what we have here. Okay, but again, you can see here that that's not the case here. Okay. Um, and so let's go ahead and actually um, um, let's actually um, fire up um, an IGMP querier. In this case here, we'll just actually make router two. We'll make it an IGMP querier. So we'll just say IP PIM um, sparse mode. And I can't remember if I enabled IP multicast routing, but I'll, I'll enable. I'll put the commands in anyway because I'm not sure. To enable. Okay. So now what's going to happen is I expect to see. Uh, well, I should say I don't. Ex I would expect to be this constrained, but but what happens now is is that this traffic to um, the port uh, switch one actually now is will eventually be constrained once the query is detected, uh, because what happens is is that we detect a query on the on the VLAN. I should say uh, we, we let me actually. Uh, <coughs> this this might take some time to actually. Um, um, might take some time to actually uh, go into effect, but what I expect to happen. Let's make sure we have it enabled too. Um, oh, I was actually that's the wrong interface. So we need interface gigabit zero one. Say IP PIM sparse mode. So what I expect to happen is eventually we're going to build state information. So okay, so now we're detecting a query. So what will happen is is that now we've we are able to explicitly uh, build state information, okay. And so in our case here, we don't have any interested um, parties for this particular multicast feed. So, for example, um, when I send this traffic here, it should actually uh, be actually it should be constrained here. It should uh, switch to should not forward this out here anymore. It, but it should forward it out fast Ethernet zero. Uh, it's actually zero uh, two because this port is part of that group. So. Let's actually um, look at the state information on switch two. So show, actually I'll just borrow the scroll buffer here. In fact, we can see that already. We can see here that 239 group, it says beef, it's, it says forward this out fast in that zero two. Again, because, because we don't have any uh, interested receivers on switch two, it's not gonna forward it across this link here, which is actually zero uh, 23, okay? And again, we, get, we observe that here. If we look at our Wireshop capture, the flow of uh, of this ping has actually stopped. It's no longer being received, and this capture is done, by the way, on the fast Ethernet zero one on switch one. So it's it's no longer so this traffic is constrained uh, correctly now. Again, I would actually expect this. In my opinion, this is not expected behavior. This should not be flooded. Uh, if even if there's not query present, it should not be flooded as unknown. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll go on router one, and we'll actually issue. Uh, I'm sorry, host one. 
it will issue the IGMP join over here. What this will do is this will issue an unsolicited IGMP membership report, send it up here, and then the switches can actually build state information. And we should now see uh, the port uh, the, for this particular group. We should now see on switch two fast Ethernet, uh, fast Ethernet uh, 023 added, and then on switch one, 01 adds this group. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll say, um, actually, this is his previous configured. Make sure on interface gigabit zero zero. So we'll say IP IGMP join group, and then of course our group is two three nine dot three dot two dot one. Okay. So now our state information should be updated um, on switch two. And again, that that's exactly what's happened here. So switch two basically said, okay, I have a receiver over here, so you need to add this to my uh, ports that want to receive traffic for this flow. Okay. Same thing on switch one. Uh, switch one um, has, uh, you know, knows that there are interested parties uh, for this group on faster than at zero one and faster than at twenty three. Okay, uh, zero twenty three. Okay, so the forwarding behavior of switch one is when you receive traffic for this group destination address. I'm going to forward it out these ports. Okay. So again, the lesson learned here is, is that the behavior here, when we don't have a query or present, at least, again, at least on this platform, and I want to emphasize this might be something, I don't know if it's specific um, to this platform I'm on, uh, but I'm actually on 3560E with advanced IP services, and this is 12.246SE. I don't know if this is something um, that's specific to this platform, um, and it's different on the, the, the 6500, I, you know, I have no idea. But again, simply observed, uh, we, as we proved with our captures, is that these adjacent switches, when uh, switch two receives a multicast feed, when, when there's no query present, it actually floods it as unknown multicast on all ports, okay? As soon as we enable the query, we see here that multicast is constrained correctly. Again, my expectation would be the opposite of that. I would actually expect, if we don't have a query present, but IJP is enabled, I would expect this traffic to not be forwarded to any ports, except for the local port here. Because again, according to our article that we showed, the Catalyst platform is able to actually process IJP membership reports that are received locally, um, but it's not actually able to perform uh, IJP processing for uh, the adjacent uh, adjacent nodes, okay, when there's not a multicast router or slash courier present, okay. So again, but what we proved this is that that's, that's not the case here. So What's odd is, is that this is the same behavior as if I disabled IGMP souping. So it's simply flooding of traffic, even on ports that are not interested in explicitly receiving it.